Welcome to another edition of Riva's Radical Rides, Friends Rides Edition, where today I have my buddy Jauke, and he's going to show us his 1950 Chevrolet pickup truck. Hey Joke, how's it going today? How about yourself? Nice, beautiful last day of summer, fall, beginning. Depression starts. Yeah. So you want to tell us a little bit about your 1950 Chevy? Sure. And uh, what the history is on it? Sounds good. Well, I bought this thing when I was 16. It was actually my very first vehicle. I said I should buy something that's kind of practical like a Civic, good on gas, you know. First cool car is trying to be an old truck, right? Yeah. I, uh, and uh, over the years I had so many plans like LS swap or a small diesel out of a Mercedes car. Beautiful red paint with a Texaco or a, a Coca-Cola emblem on the side of the door kind of thing. And then just over time I, I kind of fell in love with the old Tina farm look, you know, it's set at the field for 30 years, and I think uh, chicks dig it better, to be honest. <laughs> you know, so um, it all started though when I was in high school. My welding teacher, Mr. St. Jean, had a 39 GMC truck, and after getting to work on that truck with him, I absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't really have much of a hobby back then either, so 16 years old, worked all summer. I started searching Kijiji and I found this guy. And uh, 25 now, it took too many years to get to this point. <laughs> it was one thing or the other. You know, not enough money or too much time or not enough time. You know, it goes many ways. And sourcing parts over the years, getting good deals on stuff. You don't want to pay too much for, you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> And literally because of this truck and a parts truck that Joke had, we uh, this is how we became friends. Yeah, actually that's because, how we met on Kijiji. <laughs> yeah, Joke sold me a 53 GMC that the box is currently on my 47 project, mm -hmm. so. But, you know, it looks, when you're looking at it, it looks factory. You know, it looks the way it would have come off, not the showroom floor there, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look severely modified and underneath all the, the the body panels it actually is you know this is the look i was going for original you know we got the old original rims and hubcaps of new tires though uh same stance i didn't lower it i didn't raise it it's still got leaf spring suspension front and back solid uh, front axle it rides like a wagon <laughs> <laughs> but uh we'll start from the front and go to the back here all right uh, we'll get my custom prop rod out first just the broom handle works great. It's a good old dollar store. Stole it from the garage actually. That so what's in this for an engine? Got a 350 small block that we got out of a 86 GMC dually. That now resides in my backyard. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh oh, oh, going on here. Come on, let go. This is not good. I'm gonna turn the air conditioning off for a second. Okay. <laughs> I never did that before. Uh, that's okay. Performance issues. There we go. Should open now. Give her the old wiggle. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So under the hood we got a dusty 350. Wasn't going for the special good looks. Just whatever works. Uh, brake booster and master cylinder out of a 98 roughly Chevy truck. Uh, it's got a modern disc brake conversion kit in the front, which is why it went with the, that brake system. It's got disc in the front, drums in the back. So it's a, like I said, 350 small block. It had 160,000 kilometers on it. Drove that truck home. So I knew it ran good. And it's got a four speed, well, I don't know, what would you call that? 
to bull low. It's the bull low. So yeah. it's three speed then. Well, it's still a four, but yeah, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what first gear part. is like. Idle, like you can walk faster than it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I, I guess it's still a four speed then. Uh, yeah. We'll put a new clutch on it. I uh, had to. The engine is a little bit on the passenger side because we had to clear the uh, steering column. So I got the. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a tight fit. A <laughs> little bit. Still works though. Perfect. And uh, behind that we have a uh, custom drive shaft made for this and a 2008 Colorado axle. I could say it actually just fit right in. Uh, I had to take the leaf springs, turn them around because the old torque tube axles were uh, set forward a bit more where the eye bolts were. Oh yeah. The center bolts there. And uh, yeah, turned the leaf springs around which put the axle pretty well perfect in the center. Had I not done that, the axle would yeah, have been forward way too much. Like... And it would have looked kind of silly. Oh. <clears throat> we'll take a peek under here with all the grass. So everything underneath is nice and painted. Brand, brand new, custom made stainless exhaust by Jauk. Sounds good and smells terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's like anything old. The old man helped me out with the uh, the old wood floor and the uh, box. I was just gonna do like a checkered steel plate there, mm -hmm. but uh, just to keep that originality of the truck, we went with the uh, maple hardwood. We stained it as dark as we could so that it would match the rest of the truck and kept the original steel strips. The bolts are a little bit shiny, but it's okay. <clears throat> So with the paint, what what did you do with the paint? Well, this truck started out all brown because I guess the previous owner had sanded the entire truck down and then just left it outside and never worked on it again. Mm -hmm. So it, had, it was just completely brown. And uh, what I did was sand the whole truck down again. It sounds like a sin to say this, but we rolled the paint on the truck with paint brushes and rollers, not spray like everybody else does. It's not because of cheapness. It's just that's the way a farmer would have did it back in the day. You know, I just sped the process up by about 50 years. <laughs> so, we went to Canadian Tire, got some trim clad oil-based paint there, and just had at her with the roller, and we weren't nice about it. Nice and sloppy, made drips and runs, and uh, nothing consistent, you know. We started with primer red, which gives it that rusty color. We went black, more primer red again, and then we finished with blue. And after that, we uh, spent a good day wet sanding the truck. Really forgot how much work that was, Jesus. <laughs> and then I remembered I had a nice electric sander in my toolbox. We're, we're most of the way done, I guess you can say. And that's what uh, that's what I did to give it this uh, Fotina look. No, that's what uh, that's what I was going for. It's a lot cheaper than like, oh, yeah. doing a professional job, guys, trust me. Yeah, you're, you're, lo you're looking at like 150 bucks versus 10 grand. You know, 10 grand. <laughs> So what's going on with the interior? It won't let me in. It's <laughs> okay. That's my, my security system. <laughs> so we got Honda Civic seats. I know Japanese parts in an old Chevy truck. Is oh, it's solid. sinning. But it's comfortable. I'm telling you right now. Good Honda Civic floor mats. They work. Uh, all those pedals, like half of it's from... 90 style Chevy truck and the other half is from that 86 GMC I pulled the engine out of. <clears throat> sort of custom uh, trans tunnel that's going to come out eventually when I put a 5 speed in here. We got a uh, brand new fuel tank in the cab and zero smoking in here because uh, we're going to die. Yes. and That's a small tank. It's actually 19 gallons. Really? Yeah. Because the other ones were pretty tall. Maybe Maybe they were thinner I guess. I think so, because like this thing did not fit directly. I had to do some maneuvering around here with the, uh, the spout and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And under here, don't mind my Canadian Tire cup holder <laughs> system. I put the, uh, I've got a jack system here. It's all just under the seat. Got to make uh, good use of what room you have, right? All right. So I got that under here and uh, my little pouch in the cab corner after everything falls. All the tools for flat tires, you know. If I had to change a tire on the side of the road, which I hope never happens, because 
if I blow out in this thing, it's going to really suck trying to stay straight. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I had to redo the floors in this thing, the cab corners, the uh, the cab mounts. Like it was, it was a good amount of work. And learning from that, you know, buy something from out west where there's not any salt and rust and stuff like that. There, it's a lot better work. Interiors almost done i guess there's still some stuff to do in it but i was just too anxious to uh take it for its first spin and after i did that i just i don't want to do anything else to it that's it <laughs> speaking of first spins why don't we do that sure Viewers that know where this uh, Garson Coniston Road is and how it's terrible. That well, person right behind us is a little uh, patient. Yeah. Wait a second. 